Today I wanted to introduce the speakers. We have three kids that have gone, well I can't even say kids, we have three individuals who have gone on mission trips this summer. Now everyone that's participated today has gone on a mission trip, Havla to the Philippines, Rihanna to the Philippines, um, and then our next three speakers are going to take up our space here for our sermon time. Um, Micah has actually gone on two mission trips, and we'll be sharing that. And Noah Sanders went to Dominica Republic. He'll be sharing that. And as I kind of introduce them, I'm going to have them come up. Um, And then Brennan also, he took two mission trips um, to Micronesia and to Kenya. So Noah, I would like to invite you up first. There we go. This is Noah Sanders, and he took his mission trip to uh, the Dominican Republic. Noah, thank you so much for being here to share today. Good morning. morning. My name is Noah Sanders, and I'm a sophomore at Pine Hills. This summer, I had the unique opportunity to go to the Dominican Republic with um, an organization called Maranatha. I went on the mission trip called Ultimate Workout, which is something that they do every year for like high schoolers my age. So I went to the Dominican Republic for 10 days with about 125 people, and there were five groups um, out of the 125. Three of the groups were building churches. Um, We were building the walls to the buildings and pouring the foundation on the floor. And the other group was we did VBS, and outreach, so we hosted a ton of kids every day, did arts and crafts with them, and we also handed out literature to the local communities and prayed with them. And the last group I was in was the medical team. So I met with a ton of kids in San Francisco, and we flew all the way down to the Dominican Republic, and the facility that we stayed in was actually a nice school and there were two pools in there, which we enjoyed every night, which was pretty fun. Those are the buildings that we stayed in. One thing that I noticed there, really poor communities. As you can see there, even though the school was relatively nice for the area, there's a ton of unbuilt rebar and like stuff. A lot of the um, houses were really messed up, kind of. The doors were not on correctly, a lot of holes in the side of the houses. A lot of the roads were not paved, and there were um, a lot of feral dogs. The first day we were there, we um, sorted our medications and donations. And for the medical team, we um, had a triage, which was the vitals, and we, everyone checked the vitals. Then there was a healthcare area where People were able to see real doctors, and there was a glasses and pharmacy section. One thing I noticed was that there were, um, sorry, a lot of medical problems. And um, one guy that we were able to see had, um, he was in a motorcycle accident 30 years ago, and he didn't get it checked properly, and um, there was bone showing out of his leg. And it was shocking to me to see how many people Um, waited for hours for just basic painkillers. So not a lot of medications there. Another big problem that they had was um, mouth and lung cancer from smoking. I was able to see someone who had a golf ball sized hole in the back of his mouth, which is kind of crazy. It was really meaningful seeing how thankful the communities were towards the care that we were able to offer. And it made me feel grateful for the stuff that we'd all take for granted in the United States. We had a lot of people telling us that they would share what we were doing with their friends and family, and we had people who came that said that their family and friends had told them about us. So we're traveled very fast in their communities. Some days we saw up to 150 patients, and overall we were able to see 654. One of the um, things that I wasn't expecting besides the experience of service was a really spiritual experience. Um, Every night and morning, we had a pastor who gave us really good talks. 
And um, a lot of us were inspired to get baptized or rebaptized there, which he had help in. One of the coolest opportunities was that the medical team was able to practice giving injections on each other. And I got to give injections to a couple friends. So Brennan, whenever you're ready. <laughs> a good ob- the, the mission trip is a really good opportunity for teens to get an introduction to a life of service. And it's really cool to interact with kids from around the world who also want to serve. It also gives teens a really good opportunity to have a little independence, which we all know is really important. All in all, it was a great experience, and I look forward to going again, and I totally recommend going. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for having me here, that I can share my awesome opportunities I had this summer. Um, this summer I had the opportunity to serve in Kenya and Micronesia. Throughout my time traveling, I had the privilege of exploring different cultural experiences and helping out in the community and sharing God's love. Before I share more, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today and to serve others, both at home and abroad. Please speak through me today. Amen. One of the main reasons we went to Kenya was to build a women's medical center there in their community. As you can imagine, Access to medical care in Kenya is challenging for most people. Only about 20% of the country even has health care available. In the Maasai Mara, in the, in the Maasai Mara, the nearest hospital was a three hour drive. So clinics like this one, especially supporting women and children are critical. I got to work with a group of 13 people from Adventist Health, even though we had a smaller group, we completed twice as much work than we expected. We were small, but mighty. We did, we did carpentry and finishing work for most of the week to prepare the clinic to have ceilings installed. The women's health center had a lack, the, the previous women's health center had a lack of staff cleanliness and was not up to date regarding medical supplies and facilities. When completed, the new facility will have apartments for longer-term medical staff from the U.S. to live in for months at, at, the time, at a time to provide care. While in Kenya, I realized how lucky I am to have running water and electricity, and I will never take that for granted. I'm grateful I got to experience different cultural practices from jumping with the Maasai people to trying distinctive dishes to the Maasai culture. Oh, whoops. There we go. Yeah. Oh, there. Thank you. Um, one of my highlights was being able to see God work in many ways throughout my entire time there. The community welcomed me, and their kindness shone brightly every day. On, on the way home, we had a layover in Turkey, and we were able to see the ruins of ancient Ephesus. It was amazing to stand in the streets where Paul himself walked and swim in the Aegean Sea right where he sailed. This was the school the, for the girls' school that actually... Um, the Pine Hills mission trip will be going on this um, spring break. This was us um, getting the ceilings ready. Now the mission trip in Kenya led to a second opportunity in Mic- Micronesia, Chuk, Chuk, Micronesia. When God opens a door, you walk through it and you don't look back. While we stayed in Micronesia, we stayed on the island of Wino, 
where I supported a medical team providing supplies and training to the local hospital. The, the local hospital had basic services, no anesthesia, and had hand saws for surgery. One of the saddest but unique parts of helping the medical team was being able to observe an amputation in person due to diabetes, which they were using hand saw, which if you can imagine, the, with no anesthesia, they put like the rope under, they put the rope under and then they start sawing. I won't, don't imagine it too much. <laughs> yeah, without anesthesia too. Our team taught CPR to over 500 people, as well as the importance of eating healthy. Our nurses helped the medical staff in the local hospital by training in the best practices. I helped by unloading ship, shipping containers, hauling gear, keeping the clinics organized, setting up and breaking down mobile clinics in other islands, and preparing food for the teams. On the other islands, like Fefin and Udot, we taught the basic importance of cleaning teeth, eating healthy, drinking water, and washing hands. Not only that, but we also provided basic necessities and services such as foot care, health assessments, glucose checks, and we gave donations, school supplies, health necessity, clean water, toiletries, etc. The Bible makes it clear that God has a passion for the poor, the widows, the orphans, and needy around us. He calls us to love and support them. Um, that's where your um, pulse sailed. <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, he calls us to love and support them. The book of James defines the, a pure religion as one that is not full of hot air, lifting oneself up, instead of getting down and helping others like orphans, widows, and destitute. In, in Isaiah 1-7, God bids us to learn, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, and plead the widow's cause. These mission trips have made me realize what an impact serving others can have in someone's own life. It inspired me to want to continue working in the mission field or start my own nonprofit to provide teens that may not have the opportunity, the experience of, of a meaningful mission trip. I also realized how much our Auburn Church actually does to help others through the many services and ministries that the church and its members are involved in. And I'm also grateful to Adventist Health for running the mission trips like these to support global, to support global health missions. I know God put these opportunities in my life for a reason, and I know God is working in each one of us every day. And, that, and he tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, we find it, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Thank you for letting me share with you today. Church. Um, I want to thank you guys for having me up here and uh, for letting me come up here and share my story. Um, but first, before we start this, I actually just kind of want to ask anyone who's done any kind of service, any kind of community or mission work service across seas, um, to please stand or raise your hand or recognize yourself um, at this moment. The standing, raise your hand, it doesn't really matter. Thank you. Thank you. I really want to, actually, yeah, let's clap. Let's give him a hand. I want to thank you guys because 
Um, what you have done has paved the way for people like me um, to actually have pathways that make it easier for us to go do mission work. Um, it takes people having started the mission work for us to even be able to go to those places. It takes people to find the resources to get us across seas or find the resources to spread out and disperse among people that need it. So I just want to thank you guys for this. Um, so my mission trip service um, that I first started with was actually with my class. And um, for any of those who have been to Pine Hills or... Um, know how the Pine Hills senior year goes, towards the end of our uh, final semester, as seniors, we have a trip. And um, for that trip, my class decided that we wanted to do a mission trip. We had been saving up money from fundraisers and had been doing fundraisers all that year. Actually, well, I guess it was this year. All this year to um, go on a mission trip to Fiji. We were able to talk with um, Mr. Carrion, Pastor Carrion, our principal, and he was able to get us connections to go to Fiji. And um, so we were all getting set. We started our plans in the fall. We started making the calls, finding the plane tickets. We started talking about, oh, what does this school need? What do you guys need? Oh, we need uh, some rain collection barrels. We need some diesel money for our generator and things like that. And so we were all set. We were all planning for it. We were all thankful because we felt like we truly had found our mission. But something interesting happened. Um, I think it was somewhere around early springtime, just out of the Christmas time, that we found out that um, the travel restrictions to Fiji had changed. And for anyone who has ever gone on a mission trip before, even if the plans or the changes happen a couple months before, that can still throw a big monkey wrench into the whole thing. And so my class was extremely discouraged. We were unable to fly to our mission trip in Fiji, and we had lost all of our contacts. We weren't able to do any of the things we had planned to do. And personally, to me, this was very hard to swallow because I thought I had found the mission that I was meant to be for. But um, God had a different plan. So I won't bore you with the details of all the last minute calls, everybody scrambling, oh, I know an uncle, oh, I know a pastor, oh, we could go here, we could go here, we could go here, for the last couple months before we had to leave. And um, we finally had to settle on something that we wouldn't have really planned on doing beforehand, and that was doing a mission trip to Hawaii. And uh, as most of you can imagine, Hawaii isn't necessarily the most rough place that you could go. It doesn't have the highest death rate. It doesn't have 20% of its health care accessible to people. It's not the most rough place on the planet. But um, we decided to go there, and uh, we found Camp um, Waianae. That's how you pronounce it. I want to say Waianae. I always mess it up. I always mess it up. But we found Camp Waianae, and um, that's where we decided to go. So for me personally, this was a difficult thing to swallow because I felt like I was going from what I personally felt was more important mission to a less important mission. And um, I was, it was kind of hard for me to swallow that. But I, I knew that God had a plan, so I trusted him. So we went to Camp Waianae. And um, when we got there, we got to meet the lovely um, uh, campus managers some beautiful people from Brazil, Brazil, and then a family who lived there full-time and took care of the camp. And we got to meet with them and talk with them. And this is where my idea of what mission work really started to change. Um, I got to meet with these people, talk with these people, and see the community around that they were affecting. Um, we were on Oahu, that's where Camp Waianae is, and we we're uh, on the other side of where Honolulu was, so we weren't near Honolulu. And the town, I'm blanking on the name, I should have written it down, but I'm blanking on the name of the town. It was a little bit of a rougher area. Um, the homeless population is very high, and you can see it because the only place that they're allowed to stay um, legally is on the beaches. And so there are strips of beaches where they're just allowed to stay um, that uh, the government of Oahu allows them to stay. And it's really interesting to see. Um, I got to talk with the camp manager, and he told me who they served. 
And they are a very community-based place. Lots of people that are served there are just straight from the town. And they get to help show people what our church is all about. And so we did do some work while we were there as well. Um, as you can see, that's me up there driving around. We did tons of landscaping because as you can imagine, only three people and I think it was about 20, 30 acres of area to cover. <laughs> that's not a lot of people to cover that area. So we did tons of maintenance work. Um, we kept the property clean. We did lots of mowing, lots of um, tree trimming, stuff like that. And um, we, we put in our sweat. And that kind of made me feel better about myself. It kind of made me feel like, oh, okay, I am doing a little bit of mission work. But it still felt a little off to me. Um, but yeah, we continued to do that mission work. Uh, we did stuff like prepping this building for painting, which is their new dining hall, which another group had come before us and helped set up the, um, the framework and put the whole building together and get the kitchen running so that it could be prepped to paint. Oh, okay, that's the wrong one. All right, so I'm gonna leave that there for a second and now I'm gonna switch over to telling you guys about my trip to the Philippines. Now my trip to the Philippines, I actually never even considered it a mission trip in the first place, if I'm being honest. I was going there and I was thinking, I'll get to meet some interesting people on the Sabbath, and then I will get to spend my time out and about, getting to have fun out on the beaches. I would get to go running around, messing around all the time. We'd get to go see beautiful places, historical places, and stuff like that. And um, originally, I didn't see this as a mission field at all. But this started to change for me. So as you can see, there's us going out and enjoying the beautiful nature out there. And this, uh, we went with uh, Rihanna Crusoe as well. We brought her along. But so when we were out there, we spent lots of time getting to see the scenery. But in all honesty, it wasn't the scenery that I even remember. I'd have to go back through my phone and look at all the photos to remember all the places that I went. What really turned this into mission work for me was getting to meet all the people at the churches that we got to go to. My dad um, was having some speaking engagements out there. And this truly was where I found my mission. I got to talk to so many different kinds of people and connect with so many different kinds of people. And it was the same thing in Hawaii. I put my sweat and labor in. I did some mission work in Hawaii. But where I really found my mission was getting to connect with people, talk with people, and sing with people in church. Getting to sing with them, sing 20 hymns in the Philippines. They'll sing like 20 hymns and the service will be maybe 50% just hymns. But it's amazing. You get to see a different face of God. And I think that's truly what blessed me and being able to worship with those people, connect with those people on the same God that we both worship. I think truly that is where some of the greatest mission work can happen. And so I have some photos here to show you guys. This church was a church that we went to um, in Palawan, and we got to watch the classes graduate there. We, got, we arrived on the um, schools, the local Adventist schools graduation Sabbath. And so we got to meet all these interesting high schoolers, hear their stories, um, hear them perform, find out who they were, and see other faces of God than who we normally would see here. We got to experience a totally different type of Sabbath. And I think I was truly blessed by that. And the same thing happened with my class in Hawaii. We enjoyed our time running around, seeing Electric Beach, going snorkeling, going and seeing Pearl Harbor. And we enjoyed our time putting in our sweat and our work, helping paint, helping prep, all that. But really, and this is from multiple of my classmates as well, we found that our mission was truly meeting the people talking to the people, getting to see the other faces of God. And we were truly blessed by this. And so um, I just want to thank you guys for allowing me and all the others, Brennan, Noah, and everybody else who has done any mission work to share, share what we have done. 
And um, I pray that you guys will continue to uh, support Auburn and support anyone who is going abroad or working in our community because mission work can be found anywhere. Anywhere the people of God are, mission work can be found. So I want to um, have you guys kneel with me if you can or if you cannot, bow your heads as we close out in prayer. Oh, song? Too late. Too late. (laughs) Okay, please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all the people who have paved the way for us to be able to do these mission trips, for all the groups of people and all the people who have ever gone out on mission trips, because it is truly them who have paved the way for us to be able to do these things. And I pray, Lord, that the things that we have talked about today, the things we have seen today, inspire others to go find their spiritual path and their mission path out in the world, whether that means they walk to their next door neighbor and help them build something, or they walk to their local church and help them run a community service, or whether they go across seas, Lord. I pray that whatever it is, that you help everyone here find their mission. And as I say that, I would like to um, thank you. In your name, amen. Father God, how exciting it is to hear from our own, from the mouth of our own children. The mission is about the overflow of love coming from you to our hearts and overflowing to others. Mission is not about scarcity. It's about an overflow. And that overflow is what we long for, oh God. Fill us. Fill us that we may overflow with your love and that the overflow of that love we can share to others. Thank you for filling us today. In Jesus' name, amen.